Now that we've seen the blood supply to and from the nephrons, it's time to look more specifically at the nephron itself. A nephron has two main parts. We have the renal corpuscle here, which is where the filtration actually occurs, and then all the rest of this twisted up tube is called the renal tubule. And this is where we're going to be reabsorbing things we want to keep, as well as secreting some more waste that we want to get rid of. Let's start with a closer look at the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle is where we actually collect the filtrate from the blood. There are two main parts to the renal corpuscle. We have the glomerulus, which we've talked about already, and the glomerular capsule that's around the glomerulus. The glomerulus, you may remember, is a bed of fenestrated capillaries. Uh, they have filtration pores. And as we've seen with other capillaries, the hydrostatic pressure or the blood pressure pushes water and small molecules out of the filtration pores in these fenestrated capillaries and into the glomerular capsule. The glomerular capsule is made of two layers with a space in between. The inner layer is right on the surface of the glomerular capillaries. This is a pretty neat layer. It's made of cells called podocytes, and these podocytes have extensions that go out and then wrap around and around the capillaries. So we have a capillary here, and it's surrounded by this layer, the inner layer of the glomerular capsule made by the podocytes. The outer layer of the glomerular capsule is a layer of simple squamous epithelium, so a single layer of flat cells, and it helps enclose the capsular space, which is where the filtrate from the glomerulus actually collects. The capsular space, which collects the filtrate, empties into the renal tubule. The renal tubule is this long tube that carries the filtrate from the glomerular capsule all the way to the tip of the renal pyramid, where it will empty its urine into a minor calyx, which then goes into a major calyx, into the renal pelvis, into the ureter, etc. The renal tubule is made of simple cuboidal epithelium. Simple cuboidal epithelium is good tissue for allowing absorption and secretion. This is important because all along the renal tubule, we're going to be trying to reabsorb all the good molecules in the water that were pushed into the filtrate. And we also need to do a little bit of secretion where we're going to add in some additional waste molecules into the filtrate. The renal tubule is divided into different parts. The first part of the renal tubule here is called the proximal convoluted tubule, or the PCT. This is where most of the filtrate is reabsorbed, where most of the good molecules are going to be taken back. The water, the glucose, the amino acids, the sodium, chlorine, a lot of that gets reabsorbed here from the PCT. That's then going to be returned into circulation in the paratubular capillaries. The second section of the renal tubule is the nephron loop. The nephron loop has two parts. It has what's called the descending limb that goes down into the medulla of the kidney, and then it has the ascending limb that goes back up into the cortex again. The nephron loop is important because it sets up a salt gradient in the medulla, an area of high salt in the medulla, that's really important for being able to reabsorb a lot of water. That's the other important thing the nephron loop does is it reabsorbs water. The water that's reabsorbed by the nephron loop goes back into that capillary bed called the vasa recta. The third segment of the renal tubule is the distal convoluted tubule, or the DCT. The DCT doesn't do a whole lot, but it is important when we're getting dehydrated because it can reabsorb additional water when needed. And we'll talk more about that process when we discuss how important it is to conserve water later on. The final part of the renal tubule is the collecting duct. And several nephrons can share the same collecting duct. The collecting duct carries the filtrate, which we can now call a urine, down through the medulla of the kidney to the tip of the renal pyramid, where it drips into a minor calyx. In addition to transporting the filtrate, or the urine, down through the renal medulla, the collecting duct is also important for conserving additional water. So more water is reabsorbed from the collecting duct as well.